Zoom eens aan als. Ja, zoom eens aan. Bruch en Boim, thank you very much for attending. Welcome to our home. This week, the, uh, my thought will be on health and uh, healing in Judaism. Oops. So, let us begin. I'm going to begin to start with uh, a basic question. Are we as Jews allowed to seek and receive medical attention? The Talmud in the Tractate of Brachot answers in the affirmative and bases its answer on a verse found in the book of Exodus in the portion of Mishpatim. The verse there is referring to a person who had been injured by someone else. The end of the verse uh, states, Rapo yirape, and the, attack, and the attacker is responsible to pay all medical expenses. By the use of this double term, rape, rapo yirape, the sages learned that the assailant must pay for not only physical injuries, but also for any, any mental trauma that this, his victim may have experienced due to his attack. Based on the fact this verse in the portion of Mishpatim begins and ends with the Hebrew letter Aleph, the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Now the Talmud in Avodah Zarah gives a reason for these two Alephs at the beginning and the end. It states that the two Alephs tell us that when a sickness is decreed upon a person, the exact time it will begin is alluded to by the first Aleph in the verse, and the exact time that it will end is also decreed, alluded to by the last Aleph in the verse. Now the Talmud in Tractate of Baba Kama states, that from here we learn that permission was given to doctors to heal their patients. However, in the portion of Kiseitse, there it states, Vahashivosi lo, and you should return it to him, which is referring to a returning a lost object. So the Rambam states that from these words, Vahashivosi lo, we learn that there is an obligation for a doctor to heal a patient. So based on simple logic, if someone is required to return another person's money, Avedis Mamun, then he certainly should be required to help someone else and return another person's health, Avedis Goof. If that is the case, well, then why do we need the verse here to teach us that permission is granted for a doctor to heal? So the Rebbe answers that the obligation to heal a patient is only a requirement for someone who is a licensed physician someone who is, has the training, the ability, and the knowledge to heal. However, if the Torah did not say the words, po yirape, we would have not known that we are allowed to learn to become a physician. So here we are given permission to learn about medicine, and in the portion of Kiseitse, we are commanded to practice the knowledge that we attain based on Abir HaChumash. In the portion of B'Shalach, it states, Ani Hashem Rafayacha. I, Hashem, God, am your healer. With God, the term healer, Rofe, is used only once. And with the human doctor, the term healer is used twice, Rapo Yirape. In addition, the letter used for God healing is a Fe, Rofe, a soft sound. And the letter used for doctor healing is a Pe, Rapo, a hard sound. This alludes to the fact that when a doctor heals a patient many times, it can be uncomfortable, erroneous, and even painful. However, when, God is, when it is God who is your physician, then the healing is done gently and correctly the first time, without the pain and discomfort of needles and intrusive examinations. This is also why in the second blessing of the Amida, the standing prayer, we acknowledge that God is Rofei Cholim, the healer of all who are sick. Then again, in the eighth blessing, that we recite thrice daily, the prayer begins with the words, Rifa'inu Hashem b'nei rofei. Heal us, O Lord, and we will be healed. The word healing is mentioned five times altogether in this prayer, each one with the soft letter fei. We ask God to personally attend to our health concerns, and we hope not to need any human intervention. The prayer that we recite in the Amida for Good Health is the eighth blessing of our personal requests. Eight is a number that symbolizes something above nature. The number seven alludes to that which is natural, a seven-day week. This may be why God chose the eighth day to bring a young baby boy into the covenant of Abraham Avinu, 
of Abraham our father was circumcision. When a baby boy is circumcised, he is given his name and a godly soul. The soul consists of five separate parts. They are the nephesh, which alludes to the life force that God blew into Adam's nostrils, the ruach, which alludes to the emotional traits of God, pardon me, of man, the shama, which alludes to the intellectual capacity of the soul, chaya, which is the supra-rational self, the seat of desire, will, commitment, and faith, and yechida, which connotes the essence of the soul, its unity with its source, the singular essence of God. Now, the five times that the word refuah is mentioned in this prayer may, con may connect to these five parts of the soul, which the baby boy receives as a gift from God at his circumcision. In this eighth prayer in the Amidah, not only do we ask God for a refuah, for a healing, but we also ask him for a Yeshua, a salvation. Why do we need to ask for both? So they tell a story of Rabbi Yechiel Sarna, the Rosh Hashiva of Hebron. He was once a patient in a Swiss hospital. While he was there, he wrote, every illness has a spiritual cause. It is therefore possible that a person may recover from an illness because of some merit that he may possess. However, this may have been accomplished without correcting the spiritual deficiency that was the root of his illness. This is referred to as a refua, a healing, but not a Yeshua, a salvation since the spiritual cause of his illness still remains. There still exists the possibility that he may experience a relapse. This is the reason that when we pray, we ask God to heal, O Lord, and we will be healed, save us and we will be saved. So what our prayer is really asking of God is to bless us with a complete recovery, both physically and spiritually. That is done in the hope that we can achieve and retain our good health daily, to be able to serve him with a healthy body. This prayer, Rifa'enu, is recited three times daily. The tractate in Kedushan states, Tov Shibarofim the Gehenna, that the best of the doctors go to purgatory. When we recite this prayer, we are asking God, heal us, O Lord, that we will be healed. When a doctor acknowledges that it is God Almighty himself who heals, and that he is only a conduit to which God performs his miracles, then he is considered a righteous individual. However, if he thinks that it is he himself who brings about the healing, then he is only saying 17 blessings in the Amida instead of 18. So by leaving out the blessing, Rifa'enu, heal us, there are only 17 blessings, the gematria, the Hebrew of the Hebrew word tov, good. Then the words of the sages are apropos, since he leaves out the blessing that acknowledges God as a true healer. He merits to buy himself a one-way ticket to purgatory. Socrates said it very well. A doctor's job is to keep a, keep a patient company while God Almighty does his miracles. Anything that offers someone great rewards, more often than not, also offers great perils. There can be little doubt that being a doctor, helping others, giving solace to people who are suffering, comes with a very special reward in heaven. However, there are also dangers connected to the profession, most of which center around ego and greed. A doctor should always be aware that each patient that he treats is a prince, another child of God. Treat that person the same way that you would hope to be treated yourself if you were in that same condition. A doctor could be held culpable if he thinks that he is so great that he, has, he, that he no longer needs to consult with other physicians, or if he were to show kindness in a situation where it demanded a display of strength, such as with an amputation. One of the most serious scenarios is where his presentation of the patient's condition lacks any hope or compassion. He has not shown a concern for the feelings and mental state of his patient. Then there are doctors who, once they become wealthy, may claim that it's just too difficult for a doctor to keep all the Torah and mitzvot. You know, there was a person who came to, Chos, to see the Chos of Lublin. He asked the tzaddik to pray for his sick relative. He told the Chosa 
that the doctors had given up hope. The Chosa said that a doctor only has a right to heal. However, giving up on the life of a patient, well, is beyond their authority. That power was not given to them. A woman once came to see Rabbi Yitzhak Alchanan of Kovna. She was crying bitterly. She, had, she told the tzaddik that the doctors had just told her that her husband only had three days to live. Three days. Three days. He repeated in amazement. Is that so? They promised you three days? He said to her, I myself am not even certain that I will wake up tomorrow. No one knows when their time is up, so hold on to each precious moment that you have, each and every day. So what does the Rambam, a noted 12th century sage and doctor, say about health and exercise in connection to Judaism? The Rambam states in Hilchas Deot, since maintaining a healthy and sound body is among the ways to know God, for one cannot understand or have any knowledge of the Creator if he is sick. Therefore, one must avoid that which harms the body and accustom himself to that which is healthy and helps the body to become and stay stronger. These are a few of the things the Rambam suggests one should follow for a healthier lifestyle, and they are. A person should never eat unless they are hungry, nor should they drink unless they are thirsty. One should never put off relieving oneself, even for an instant. Rather, whenever they feel the need to urinate or defecate, they should do so immediately. One should not eat until their stomach is full. Rather, one should stop when they have eaten about three quarters of their capacity. He states without reservation that most diseases can trace their origin back to gluttony. The blessing that God gives us in the Shema Yisrael is via visavata, and means and you will eat and you'll be sated. In order for a person to live a healthy life, one must be able to eat to live, not live to eat. He states that one should exercise each morning to the point where he is starting to break out in a sweat. After a slight rest, then he should eat. One should always eat while seated or reclining on one's left side. As we all know from our Passover seders, we lean to the left when we eat our matzah and drink our wine. We are imitating how wealthy people would eat in olden times. They would recline on their left side since the esophagus, the food pipe, is positioned on the left side of the body. This way, they would prevent their food from going down their trachea, their windpipe, by mistake, which could cause them to choke. The Rambam also suggests that when eating a meal, light foods should precede heavier foods, such as eating a salad before eating meat. The Rambam then warns not to exert oneself immediately after eating. He suggests that one should sleep eight hours daily. He says that one should not sleep face down nor on their back. They should begin sleeping on their left side. And sometime during that, during the night, they should turn over. So they should end the night on their right side. You know, I read an article in Healthline magazine that stated, sleeping on your side can offer many best benefits, especially if you have recurring back pain or sleep apnea. Still, your body may prefer a bit of variety throughout the night to prevent pain in other areas of your body. Now, physicians tell women who are pregnant that they should sleep on their left side during their pregnancy, since it may help preserve the blood flow to their growing fetus. Not all the suggestions that the Rambam makes are still applicable today. The main point being expressed is that he saw very clearly the connection between health and spirituality. He connects health to food, sleep, and exercise. Well, these three are still relevant today. There was a great rabbi who was crying on his deathbed. His students asked him why he was crying. He replied that in hindsight he wished that he had not abused his body as much as he had. He told them that if he had treated his body better, then he might have been able to put on his tefillin just one more time. Our bodies are a gift from God. We do not have permission to abuse them. The only way we can serve God properly is if we take care of our bodies. What affects the body also affects the mind. It is very difficult to serve our Creator, our Father in Heaven, when we are in pain. It is almost impossible to study and perform mitzvot 
when our minds and our bodies are in agony. We as Orthodox Jews are required to connect all of our actions to the services, service of God Almighty. Nothing, nothing that we do should be done without forethought. When we eat, sleep, exercise, work, whatever action we take, even those deeds that seem to be totally mundane, nonetheless, they should still be performed with the intent of bringing us closer to our Creator with love and awe. The only reason we were given a body in this world was for us to have the strength and the ability to study Torah and do mitzvot. You know, over the last two years, I think that many of us have focused most of our attention on this pandemic, which to many of us represents sickness and even worse. I, I get it. it. It's pretty hard to ignore. But what if, what if we are looking in the wrong direction? Why not look at health and life rather than fear and depression that many of us are experiencing? What if we change our focus and try to follow the advice of the Rambam? Exercise, sleep, and food. What if we decide to do a moderate workout at least three times a week? What if we try to get at least seven hours of sleep daily? What if we eat with our stomach and not with our eyes? What if we commit our time and energies in making our lives richer and fuller? Yes, a person can be religious and still live a healthy lifestyle. Based on the words of the Rambam, it is mandatory. So let us take, let us, pardon me, not take for granted our good health. We need to be active participants in taking care of the body that God Almighty has loaned us to use while we journey, journey through this world. And with that, let us hope and pray for the coming of Mashiach Sakana quickly and in our time. Again, let me thank you for attending. Uh, God should bless you with health, happiness, and success. Uh, again, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so very much.